Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today I'm going to show you how to manage your mid-season cucumbers and also plant in another wave. You want to plant cucumbers in succession every anywhere from three to six weeks. You need about 45 to 60 days of warm weather to get a crop from a transplant all the way up to harvesting. This is a second wave planting. There are about anywhere from four to six Boston pickling cucumbers in there. And I just want to show you what's going on. In the back, straight back, you can see two cucumbers. I've been harvesting a ton of cucumbers out of here. There's two more right there. There's one that's a little bit overripe. They pop up so fast, sometimes you can't catch them all. That's six. Another one back there, seven, eight. I can see another one, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. This is still going. So we're going to take care of this plant. I'll show you how I spray and feed it. Here's another wave of cucumbers that I just put in. We'll talk about that. I'm not going to show you how I plant them. I'm going to uh, link a video in the iCards and end screen. I did a video called Perfectly Planting uh, Cucumber Squash Zucchini. This guy was my first one going in. It's kind of beat up and if you turn the leaf over you'll see those black specks on there. Those are probably some kind of flea beetle. This plant is really ready to come out, but this kind of damage pattern, that's from insects eating the underside. So I'm going to show you, we'll, we'll work on actually trying to save this and I'll show you how I feed it to save it. In here was a mistake. I accidentally planted a bush variety in here. And when your cucumber plant starts looking like this, the best thing to do is really reach in and just get rid of it. We'll replant in there don't worry about it. You don't want to work on saving a beat up plant when you can just replant and you'll have a great harvest really in sometimes four to five weeks after you drop in the transplant. All right, let's get to, let's get to uh, spraying the peppermint oil on those first, first cucumbers I showed you and how we can feed them and take care of them. So the first thing you want to do is get in there pick all your cucumbers. These are pickling uh, cucumbers. Boston pickling, I believe. That's about the size you want. If they start getting larger or you see your cucumbers have already growing, starting to get yellow, yellow, orange, that just means they've been on too long. That's not a issue with fertilizers. It's not a disease or nutritional or anything like that. You just want to pick them when they're nice and green. If you see misshapen ones, take them off too. But get in there, remove all the cucumbers. Then you want to start inspecting your plants and you just want to go and look through. I think we'll leave that one grow a little bit longer. And when I was in there I started seeing something that looks like maybe like baby baby powder drops on there. There's one. There's another one right there. Another one right there. And that's a mildew of some sort. So we're going to spray this with an antifungal. I'm going to use Serenade. And if I look around I can see little faint light white areas and that is a fungus. Sometimes it's on the underside. When I'm looking at the leaves, lots of white specks on there. That's not nutritional. When I turn the leaf over, I can see that's a little bug of some sort. If you can see it moving, there's a cocoon. Let's actually remove this whole leaf. Dispose of that. So we're going to hit this, soak it well, undersides of the leaves, top sides with a peppermint oil spray or a rosemary oil spray. I'm going to use peppermint oil. I sell both of those at my seed shop. Two teaspoons and a one gallon sprayer with enough soap so that when I shake it up it stays dispersed for about 20 seconds and shake it as you apply it. So the peppermint oil spray is going to go down on the underside. That will be an irritant and it's going to really bother all those small tiny insects, spider mites, sometimes aphids, and really just make it uncomfortable for them to be around there. It's not going to harm bees or anything like that. It's not going to kill off insects. It's not enough oil to be a smothering oil. Right on that leaf you can see the mildew starting. After that dries I'm going to come back and hit it with some serenade. Soak it in well. Get that under control. Now I shot the beginning of this video at about 12 o'clock. You want to put sprays and stuff on your leaves in the heat of the summer when it gets to the later evening. It's about six o'clock when it starts cooling down. So real simple. Let's see if I can do this left-handed. 
you want to spend time, and I like this arch. There's an arch in there. I don't know if you can see it. Some of some of my other videos, where you can see it right in there. So it makes it so easy to get in and spray your oil sprays, your peppermint sprays, and you really want to get the undersides. Actually, the peppermint oil, rosemary oil for cukes, is really more dependent on being successful by soaking the underside. So you're going to soak it down really as much as you're seeing me do it. Really get in there and get the undersides. It's really, really important. After this, um, I'll put the serenade on. Um, you know what, I'm going to skip that because it's going to be the same exact thing. Let's just pretend this is serenade. Once this dries, you can do any order you want. You can do the serenade and then the peppermint oil spray. There's a chance the peppermint oil spray will wash off some of the serenade. So I like to do the antifungal second. But you're going to just come in with your serenade. Hey, look in there. Real quick. Squash bugs. So when you're in here too, and they're mating, surprise, crush them and get rid of them. And there was another one running in there. So you're going to be looking and inspecting for squash bugs and other insects. There's one in there. Let's see. Oh, it flew off. So when you're in here, kill off the bugs. Look back to the serenade. You want to really pretend this is the serenade again. Coat the top of the leaves, the undersides, same exact process. Let this dry, and then the next part is we're going to come in and put in an organic granular fertilizer in the bottom, and we're going to do an insoluble, I'm sorry, we're going to do a soluble organic fertilizer too. So feeding time, it's the end of July. This is a chicken manure. Any organic fertilizer is fine. Try and get around the 555. N, P, and K. This is a 323. That's okay. We're going to add to the water soluble fertilizer. Granular type fertilizer is usually called insoluble fertilizer, which means this is not readily or quickly available to your plant. It's got to get on the soil. Soil biology has to break it down, free up the nutrients, and then it can be absorbed by the root system. So you're going to put this down now. So this is one handful for me. This is about four tablespoons. You can kind of do an experiment, grab a handful, see how much it is. You really want to follow the instructions and add a little bit more. So for instance, most of these say add two or three tablespoons around the base of the plant. Go about an inch, two inches away from the stem and just sprinkle it around the plant. So I have all that space in there. I'm not going to get in there and measure it perfectly. So it was one handful, two handfuls, three handfuls, that's about 12 tablespoons scattered through there. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I threw in an extra one. So what's my point? Is you don't have to follow this exactly. This is an insoluble organic fertilizer that's slowly going to break down over time. You would really have to put pounds and pounds of this around your plants to damage it. So handful, 4, 8, 12, 16 tablespoons. That's going to have this fed for the next month slowly breaking down. So as much as I love this first cucumber plant, it's got a lot of jumping beetles on there. Those are flea beetles. They're everywhere and they're coming. Uh, flea beetles love eggplant. So if you're planting eggplant, you're gonna have to battle flea beetles. I'll be doing a video on that. I do have one already on my channel. Instead of trying to save this, because really looking at what I got from those plants, there's to be 15, 16 cucumbers there. I really don't need this plant. And I'm just going to reach in, yank it out. I'll take off the cucumbers that I can use. And why am I doing this? Because you have to be comfortable getting rid of your plants. This is going to open up a lot of space. It'll allow me to get the flea beetles under control. But if this plant was holding all the flea beetles and insects, it's not that far of a jump for them to get over to the healthy plants. What I can do much more uh, to save that plant and use my time wisely than I really can to do this one. So we'll leave this here. I'll come back. I'll take out the cucumbers that were on there. But this space will be planted with a new, new cucumber and we'll finish this video up with that. Now, the water soluble fertilizer is more important. When it's water soluble, that means it's easily absorbed, often by plant leaves and the root systems and the NPK nutrients will get to the plant right away. So we're doing two types. Now, three gallon container, I recommend an organic, all purpose 
water soluble plant food you could use Job's that's fine that's a five two three five nitrogen two uh, in P and K two phosphorus and three potassium this is a newer product from miracle Grow, and it is a higher nitrogen it's an 11 nitrogen which I like for the cucumbers get some more leaves growing you know really help that plant out follow the instructions mix it in there now I also put in a tablespoon of the chemical fertilizers. Everything in the world is a chemical. But when you're talking chemical fertilizers, that usually means miracle Grow. This is not miracle Grow, but it was, um, I think, Garden Expert or whatever version Walmart has. Anyway, chemical fertilizers do not harm you or your plants. Use them wisely. So this would call for three tablespoons of the chemical fertilizers like miracle Grow. I just put in one tablespoon. Why? Because it has really uh, a nice mix of micronutrients and second level macronutrients. Magnesium, calcium, sulfur. I want to get that all represented. If you don't want to use the chemical fertilizers, this is where you could put in the Epsom salt. That's magnesium and uh, sulfur, magnesium sulfate. It would be one to two tablespoons per gallon and you would just spread one gallon of water through here and that's plenty of Epsom salt. And then maybe you want to use something like um, kelp meal or something to bring in the extra micronutrients. That's up to you. But the minimum, keep it simple, organic insoluble fertilizer and then a water soluble organic fertilizer as instructed. If you want to go with the extra mile with adding in a chemical fertilizer, adding in other micronutrients, you could go ahead and do that. So three gallons and I usually break it up into again a, a space and I would do one gallon, one gallon, one gallon. And let me just give you an eyeball. So break this into thirds, one gallon into each portion. You can even put some out here if you wanted to. It's all going to wash in. So we're not going to do this whole thing because I'll just be wasting your time. But I would just start here and just let it soak in. So I would take this three gallons. That's enough to feed all these plants. Good to go. Final step would be to come in and really water it into with your hose. Give it a good inch of water. That will get this set up. We're going to do two things in closing. I'm going to go show you the transplants that are going to take over the spaces of the plants that I just removed. Captain Jack's dead bug dust, organic, outer leaves. Let's see if I can do this left-handed. That's what I'm going to do. Now, you, typically I do this in the evening like it is now when the pollinators go away and then I come and rinse it off in the morning. I don't want to over rinse this because I just put the antifungals down, but try and get the outer leaves, like a portion there, some outer leaves over here. You can even put some just on, just like that. Stay away from the flowers. What is this for? I found cucumber beetles walking around. So you put the dust on like that. Don't overdo it. Don't cover the flowers. Cucumber beetles will walk through there. That will get rid of the problematic beetles. So this is how I generally do a mid-season and later season care of my cucumber plants. And I want to walk over, because remember, I put in the third wave right there. Again, you know, I didn't enjoy pulling out that cucumber plant. But sometimes you have to do that. I'm going to be going through the garden this weekend, removing all the weak plants. Also in here, I have another wave of cucumbers in there. That just got sprayed with the same stuff. That's an Armenian cucumber. And just bear with me. So if one you have a second. good 60, 75 days of weather that's not going to bring a frost, you can put in waves of cucumbers. This is a 2019 All America Selection winner, Green Light. They just sent me some seeds and they were just declared a winner. They're going to go out into the spots where I just removed those cucumbers. And remember, it's okay to take out a plant that is sick. I have one plant producing all of these. So don't hold on to a plant that's got past its prime, so to speak. I know it's sad. Remove it. Start some transplants, get them out there, and you'll continue to get a great harvest through the season. Thanks for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. Thanks for watching.